is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's time! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Right there, right there, hold on, right there. Boom, I faked him. Oh, whoa, that was, whoa. I'm back. But. Mother Bobo, how you say that name? I'm going to go home tonight. I'm going to drink a Coors Light. Fighting out of the red corner. I completely dominated that fifth round. That fifth round want me to fight. From the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. It's time! The number one MMA show in America. Caged in MMA. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Caged In MMA. I'm your host, Errol Marks, my co-host, Anthony Andriosi. Remember, you can reach us by going to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Again, it's www.worldwidesportsradio.com. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is go to our app. How do you do that? You go to the iOS And how do you do that on the iOS? Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is put in WWSRN. And on Android, all you have to do is put in Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You download the app. You can follow us. You can watch our shows. You can listen to us. We have everything on our app. So definitely check us out. Uh, We are working with sponsors very, very soon. So there's so many things going on in the app. I'm adding more stuff as we go. And we're going to have some tickets and jerseys that we're going to be giving away on some trivia questions on the app in the very, very near future. But, Anthony, what's going on, man? What's going on, buddy? I am good, bro. I know you're tired, man. I know you're mm-hmm. tired. And it's a story uh, of my life. Well, it's a story of everybody's life. I, I mean, even our guests. I'm sure they have a, a tiresome uh, life over there. If it's not Kai, <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> or it's not Mike. But uh, Kai's let's... living the dream over there. What are you talking about? Well, let's let's introduce our guest. So why don't you do that? Okay. First off, we have Master Kai Evers out of Queens, New York. If nobody knows who the hell he is, I guess you've been living under a rock. Well, I guess we're living under a rock. Hey, I, where you guys want to lay your head, that's on you. Mm. But Hall of Famer, multiple discipline black belt, no stranger to Bubble Bellator. black belt? Is it a bubble black belt? For him it is. Oh. <laughs> um, no stranger to the MMA scene, pro, amateur, and otherwise. And also we have... Mr. Mike Pagano, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt, an instructor over at Royal MMA. What's going on, guys? Uh, I'm here, guys too, going? Tony. Why'd you forget about me? Oh, damn. I didn't even know Chris was on the call. And we also have Mr. Chris Papandria uh-huh. over at Dynamic uh-huh. Jiu-Jitsu. See, when somebody texts you and says, are you in, usually the word is yes. <laughs> hey, 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 check your text. Check I can't, man. I'm, These I, are I'm, your friends. These are your friends, buddy. You want also? They are. <laughs> Yo, you gotta take the good with the bad. I don't care. Well, you I know. I know Kai personally. I don't know Mike much, and I know Chris because we interviewed Chris. Yes. So, so I, I know a little bit about Chris, not much, but I know Kai pretty well. I've I've had him in the studio. I, I him and Destiny uh, over the years uh, came to the studio and we did some good interviews. And I like I like I like Kai. I've heard of Mike, and I know Chris. So here we go. Are you guys ready? Yes, sir. Yep. All right. So, yeah. so I, I want to get into this week's UFC super heavyweight title bouts. Okay, and I, I I can go up and down. I I know this guy does not like Cormier. All right, he he can't stand Daniel Cormier. And I want to know your guys' opinion one by one. Kai, you can go first. Mike, you second. Chris, you third. And I want because I, I'm going to argue this because. Me and him have gone at it a couple of times. Now, he knows that, he knows that Cormier is a great wrestler. And we've argued that. He, he's one of the best wrestlers we've seen in the UFC. It's not much of an argument. No, but you don't like him as a fighter. You think he's a boring fighter and he's obnoxious, right? Am I right? Yeah. All right. So, so I want to know you first, Kai. Going into this fight, and this is a pretty good card. It's not a great card. It's a pretty good card. Dana White's trying to figure something out. Maybe there's a mathematical equation for the UFC, and maybe it'll pop out if you know what in the near future. Or if it doesn't, he could drop a deuce and hopefully uh, find something in the deuce. But 
Uh, Kai, what do you think about this fight? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm Team Stipe. Uh, I think there was a fluke that uh, he happened to get knocked out in the very first fight of him. I was very surprised at that. I think he had some bad uh, issues and some layovers from his last fight. So I think that gave him one of those weak jaws for that fight. But I think what happened in that second fight is going to happen in the third fight. I think he's bigger. I think he's stronger. I think he's more skilled. I think he has enough wrestling to uh, negate Daniel Cormier's wrestling. And I think he's going to put him down again. I would say round three would be my opinion. I think that would be enough to take the gas out of Daniel Cormier and uh, and put him down. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I think I... Daniel has great wrestling skills, but unfortunately, I think he's overly hyped. I think John Jones exposed him numerous times, and I think Stipe is going to do the same. Mike, what about you, man? Come on, Team Cormier, man. Come on, Team Cormier. Yeah, I don't go for Cormier, really, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> there he goes. There's wow. his friends. So, here's, here's a, I mean, we're looking at it. I mean, we all know Daniel's really good in the tight clinch. He's, he's got really good power shots in the clinch. He needs the clinch. If he doesn't get that clinch off and Stipe keeps it long like he's supposed to, then Stipe has got the fight. Now, we all know that Stipe can negate the, his wrestling, Cormier's wrestling, because we've seen it. Even Cormier spoke on it. When he grabbed Stipe's leg, he knew he could you know, counter-wrestle him. So as long as he doesn't get caught up Playing Cormier's game, getting into the clinch, and getting short power shotted and leaned on, I think Stipe will come out on top. I'd probably say third or fourth round as well. All right, Chris. Are you going to be on my side, or are we going to, we're going to have a three-on-none or four-on-none against me, man? Because I, I need a partner here. How about you? Do you think Cormier has a chance in this fight? I hate to say it, but you are um... – you're flying solo on this one. <laughs> um, oh, man. Uh, Stipe, honestly, I think if Stipe plays his game, which is, you know, keeping what Mike said, keeping everything at a distance, keeping uh, Cormier at the end of his punches, almost playing like uh, the old school Chuck Liddell, where he would keep guys at the end of his punches and – Anytime he would get taken down, he'd pop up right back up. I think that that's what's going to happen this time. I don't foresee Cormier um, winning this time because he does need that clinch. And he is a lot shorter than Steve Bay. And his arm length is a lot shorter, too. So it's going to be a hard time to get inside of him. So out of all of you guys, none of you are taking Cormier's side. This guy was an, uh, an all-time champion. This guy held the belt not once but twice, the heavyweight title. And everybody just don't want to go on the, the wrestler's side because Stipe is the power puncher. He's the guy that could stand up. Now, what happens if Cormier takes him to the ground? That's what I want to know. And, you, and Mike, you and Kai, are, and, and, and you too, Chris, are guys that like to take people, the people on the ground and dominate on the ground. You're going to honestly tell me a Greco-Roman wrestler, a top collegiate wrestler who has dominated. Olympian. An Olympian. Olympian. An Olympian. Takes a guy as strong as Stipe on the ground. He can't win this fight. I absolutely believe he can win this fight. And I know this is going to be a very boring fight. He's not going to stand up with Stipe. Because the last time he stuck, he, he, st- he stood up with uh, Stipe, he got knocked out. So why would he stand up against a guy that he knows he can get knocked out from? So I beg to differ. I think Cormier early in the fight is going to try to dominate on the cage. He's going to use his strength, use his body to torque him to the ground and dominate him and put his weight on the body. Did you see how heavy he was in this fight? Did you guys see how heavy he no, was? I saw, I saw Cormier uh, in the second fight when they went against each other. Cormier did clinch up quite a few times and did hit him in that same exact fashion, and it just nothing happened. And I've actually seen Stipe take a, the wrestling advantage to Cormier, and also when Cormier got him to the floor, he didn't really keep him down there for a very long time, and it only happened in the round one of the first fight, if I remember. And it didn't. we haven't seen it since. No, so, so that's pretty much so, like almost so, like. So, so I'm going to sit here, and this guy's smirking over here because he knows, he knows. I and I want to know your opinion. What do you think is going to happen, happen, Anthony? Because going back and forth, and we've argued this point. I'm not a Daniel Cormier fan, by the way. I am not a Daniel Cormier fan, but I think he's going to win this fight. And matter of fact, I think he could win this fight pretty early. I think he's going to take him down and he's going to ground and pound him and eventually try to tap him out or do whatever he can to stop Stipe. Stipe hasn't been in an octagon in a very long time. He hasn't been since T4 Daniel Cormier, am I right? right. 
So this is a guy that hasn't stepped in. And you're going to say, well, Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier trains right now. Stipe right now with all the, the firefighting and everything like that. The guy just started getting back into the gym, what, two, three months ago? This guy has not been training. Daniel Cormier has been training. He, he, uh, he uh, trains out with Khabib. He trains out in San Jose. So there is a little bit of understanding of what this guy can do and how he does it. I beg to differ. I think that this guy is... Absolutely ready for this fight. I think he's going to beat Stipe, and I still think he's going to retire after this fight. I absolutely believe he's not going to, even if he wins this fight and he gets the belt from him, he's not going to hold the belt. He's going to retire again. He wants to prove that he could beat Stipe twice out of the three times he fought him. Yeah, no. I, I just, no. I just thought, I think once somebody Uh-oh. starts talking about retirement, Uh-oh. then it's time for them to, to hang it up. I just I don't think you're mentally in there. I don't think you're physically putting in your all. I just think you're just not all in there. And he's been talking about retirement, not just before this fight. He's been talking about retirement for quite some time. And I say it would probably be longer than a year. Once you are burnt out and you start thinking about this is no longer for you, then it's no longer for you. Even Dana White says it himself. Once you start thinking about retiring, it's time to retire. Well, okay, Anthony, it's your turn. It's your turn. What do you think is it? Yes. You're allowed to talk to me? Yes, you're allowed to talk. And and, 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 and by the way, I got your three buddies over here. So if you 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 say anything crazy. You know what's really funny is you 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 categorize your buddies. You categorize this as my. It's tag team. Yes, your panda team. This is Survivor Series. I'm just by myself here. But here's the thing. If. (laughs) <laughs> you said something that they would agree with. They'd agree with Wait you. a second. First of all, if I didn't say anything that has some kind of understanding or thought to what I was saying, then I don't know what I'm this saying. Is, this is what's beautiful. Well, 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 let's hear it. Okay? Let's hear this. Let's this, is, hear it. this is what yeah. I always wanted. This is a coach's show. Mm. There's things that coaches understand mm. in a mindset that Joe Public doesn't. Oh, so that's what you call me now. I'm Joe Public. What, whatever. Pick a name. You hear this, guys? You see what I get? Have fun. This is what you guys do. I'm Joe Public. There's a mentality that people have to understand, which we all have to – and this is the one thing that I'll bring up that Kai started going into. What Stipe has now over Cormier is he has Cormier doubting himself. When you put doubt in someone's head, it's different than fear. What happened with John Jones? He's got his number. What happened with Cormier going into the rematch? What Stipe over, over, went over that. Ah, went over that. I let you talk. Mm. Like for the last 15 minutes. I Get out of here. I'm the host. Then, I'm supposed to talk. Okay. <laughs> so you can give me two minutes. With that being said, now there's that doubt in his head because what happened? And this is the worst kind of doubt of all things. The first three rounds, Stipe was losing. Mm-hmm. And what happened? Stipe just flipped it with those body shots. And what seemed like the miracle just automatically happened, and it ended up with what, like, pretty much all of Cormier's uh, failures do, him crying. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be crying again tomorrow, roughly at, like, one thirty, And then it's going to be like, oh, are you giving up, and he's retiring, and this, and that, and that, and boo boo you know, when all that shit comes down his face and stuff. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> it's over. If he wins, great. No problem. Oh, What's if, he end up wins, if he wins, I'm giving a massive, massive text out to all of you guys. I'm getting all your numbers, and I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you guys. I told you so. once again. We're yeah, all coaches. Uh, we are, we are used to a, ignoring oh, text Joe messages. Public. I'm Mr. Joe Public. So I just, I, I just I ignored think. Chris's text. I'm going to, I'll ignore <laughs> yours too. It's plain and simple. Oh, you, you listen to this, Chris. Now but you should have taken my side. Here's buddy. the thing. Now you should have taken my, my side. My my three buddies here. Oh. Let me ask them. Nope. You can't tell me. That doubt doesn't play something into someone's head when it comes to these rematches. Look at Mike. Look at Mike. Look at Mike. He's, yeah. His head's bobbing up and down. It looks like a Pez dispenser. You know damn well he's agreeing with me. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Cormier's, Cormier's, I mean, Cormier's a great athlete, but Cormier is his own worst enemy at times. We already saw that with John Jones, you know. He's going to beat himself up. He's going to say he has the heart to do this and do that, which don't get me wrong, he does. You know, he's again, he's an athlete. Anybody can get knocked out with four-ounce gloves. But doubt kills everything. And to me, I, I just, again, if he doesn't close that distance and get in that clinch range and get some power shots off or lay some weight on Stipe, I don't see it ending too well for him again. 
How about you? Oh, what is that? Oh, I like that sound right there. It's a little, little scary over here. Okay, Sean O'Malley versus Marlon Vera. Now, <laughs> uh, you know. We're really talking about this? Yeah, part? absolutely. Absolutely. Sean O'Malley, obviously, uh, a P- some people believe is the heavy favorite. You need to bet fight. two grand on O'Malley in Vegas to win 100. That's yeah. how bad this fight is. I mean, a lot of people are betting on Sean O'Malley, and obviously he's the big-time favorite. This is the undefeated fighter. Everybody speaks about his now his power that he is unleashing on every single fighter he's been fighting since he's come back from two-year uh, yeah, two year uh, deciding not to fight. Um, hiatus. I, what? what? Hiatus. 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 Whatever. I, I want to know your, your opinion right now, Chris, uh, on this fight. I do believe Sean O'Malley has the power to knock out Vera, but Vera is a guy that's uh, a guy that could take you on to, to uh, take you to the ground. He could also stand up for you, so it's, uh, stand up with you. He's not a scared little little baby who's going to sit there and not take a punch. So, uh, what what do you guys think, uh, Chris? You first. Who do you think has this fight and why? And then we're going to get into I some of the rules. I think Sean O'Malley is. I think O'Malley is going to win this one. Uh, he's a little bit more well rounded. He does have a ground game, so if he does go to the ground, he can work off his back. But if it is standing, you know, same thing. He's been showing lately that he does have a lot of power in his hands. But, you know, everybody has that knockout power until they get knocked out. So it just takes one punch for somebody to get clipped. And, you know, I think that, you know, it could go either way for this one. But I'm leaning more towards Sean. Kai, let's hear it. Let's hear Mr. Gratitude over there. You're a team gratitude, Kai. You've known me <laughs> just there. a no I'm team the, panda. I'm the same exact way. I'm going to go with, uh, with with Sean also, too, for the fact that I think he, he's hot right now. And I think that people are setting him up to be the next big thing. So I think they're going to throw the right matches for him because styles do make matches. And I think this style is playing more towards his his own uh, field and his expertise. So I think that they're giving him all the tools to uh, get to the next level for himself and make themselves a next big star. And I think he has the power. I don't see it going past the second round. I think he's going to, he's going to lay him out like he's been doing a lot of people in the, in the, in the past and in his rise to the top. So I don't see this going very far. And I think he has some an underrated, underrated ground game, but I think uh, we're not really going to see much of it. I don't think he has the skills to get close enough to utilize that ground game against uh, Sean. So I think he's going to do that. What they say is a, uh, the touch of death that's been coined before, even with McGregor, I think he has a very similar style that way. Same thing with MVP. And I think he's going to, to touch him. And I think lights are going to go out. How about you, Mike? I know you're drinking over there. You have all different <laughs> drinks. You have your coffee. You have your you have whatever kind of shake you have over there. I mean, you're going all back and forth. I see different cups going up and down. All that's missing uh, is a package of peanuts, and I swear to God, I Mike mean, is on like a, a first class friggin' flight. I, I mean, look at this. There we go. Got it. He's got there peanuts go. too. I mean, like seriously, man. This guy's got a whole uh, kitchen Mike, inside. Mike, you his... have your neck pillow on too. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee. What is that um, supposed to mean, Mike? I'm an uh, athlete yeah. too, man. I'm an athlete. What does that mean? I don't drink coffee. Nobody said you weren't. <laughs> well, get yourself some damn coffee. <laughs> um, Sean O'Malley, they threw me all off. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I personally, I, I like O'Malley as, as a, uh, you know, his, he's a good fighter, man. He. It is. It's even. It isn't even about like his power. Sometimes it's his timing. Do you see how that kid moves? Like cuts angles, almost like like Lomachenko. You know, right? Almost very, very much so. Like the way he turns his angles, he cuts it, gets good power off his timing. It, it's just crazy to see. And again, he is very well rounded. Where yeah, Cheeto. You know, he's he's got a good ground game. He's got a good stand up game. But there's just something about O'Malley's timing that if he catches you just right man it's it's scary um i mean i like him as a fighter i don't like his antics outside the cage but i like him as i I like his style mike tyson coming back uh to boxing as a a hall of famer uh against another hall of famer roy jones jr a lot of people are saying that 
Roy Jones Jr., because he's the boxer and because Tyson hasn't been back in the ring in a very long time, I know it's an exhibition fight, but you know damn well that these guys are going to go at it, and they're going to go at it trying to knock each other out. These are old-timers. Roy Jones Jr. looks like he ate too many, uh, too many donuts and hot dogs, okay? And Mike Tyson looks very, very good, but we've only seen a minute of uh, him hitting the bag and him hitting the mitts. We really haven't seen him get into the ring for three minutes and actually box somebody, which is, is going to be a problem if this fight goes more than two rounds for Mike Tyson because this is a guy that's in his 50s. He's an old man, uh, can still hit as hard as practically almost anybody in this whole wide world, but uh, that doesn't show when you're fighting a boxer. A lot of people are making, making this out to be a joke. Mike Tyson's trying to bring Hall of Famers back into the ring, trying to set up a different, different look to what boxing could be when these guys retire, where they can make some extra money. What are your guys' thoughts to this, uh, this up-and-coming fight coming up in September? Hold that thought, guys. Hold that thought. What do you, who do you think is going to win? You want me to go first? You go first. All right. Well, I, I, I love I love Roy Jones Jr. I grew up a Roy Jones Jr. fan. Uh, I Every time when I started boxing when I was 18 years old, I tried to implement my style of uh, moving and, and, and using my jab and dancing in the ring and using my footwork uh, to my advantage, not trying to use the power because power can only go so far in a boxing ring, as you guys know. It, it, it just it, – it's all about technique and speed and, and getting inside and using the body and using everything like that. But um, Mike Tyson is a guy that has a tremendous amount of power, and you can't take it away. Roy Jones Jr. never fought in heavyweight division, Anthony. Never did. <laughs> what are you laughing about? What are you laughing about? No, no, no. You're telling me this, like you're saying heavyweight division, like this This is a seasoned veteran fight. This is a seasoned veteran fight. This you, is the movie think, grudge match oh, so just in real life. Oh, so you don't think that they're going to go at it and they're going to try to knock each other out? They're 70 years old. Well, first of all, Roy Jones Jr. is 45 years old, 44 years old. And uh, wait a second, Manny Pacquiao's 41, 42, and he's still boxing. Okay? And that's just it. He's continuously boxing. And he's a great fighter. He's a top of the line fighter. When was the last time Roy Jones Jr. fought? I, I don't know, four years ago, five years ago? I think there was still a 19 in the beginning oh, of the day. No, it was four years ago. Roy Jones Jr. got into the ring. He didn't win, but he got into the ring. And Roy Jones Jr. is a boxer. And you could say whatever you want about Roy Jones Jr. He could still hit the mitts. Go watch the, go watch the training that he's been training. And he just looks like he has too Speedy, many has jelly been drinking today? No! Oh, my God. He, you know what it is? This guy thinks he knows boxing, Kai. Mike no, I don't know boxing. This guy thinks well, he knows boxing. Mike. See the my, my cage in is, MMA. Who the hell cares? This, this is a joke. This is what it is. This is this is the spectacle. That's literally what it is. This oh, is a spectacle. On, it's Get just something here. mostly for the crowd to see. And it's literally, it really doesn't, I don't think it does anything great for boxing. I think a lot of people are going to watch it because they're just curious. So it's great for boxing, Kai. That's great for boxing, Kai. Uh, Mayweather, people want to watch it. Kai, that's great for boxing. Gonna, if you're watching it, win? <laughs> it's great for boxing. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. If it's well, yeah, if it's going to be if it's it going to be if Conor McGregor was great for boxing. Oh well, hold on one second. I'm, <laughs> hold on one second. You're going to bring Conor McGregor into this boxing match? Conor McGregor has nothing yeah, to do with this I boxing think, match. I think a spectacle is a spectacle. A spectacle like, is. It's, it's, you're, you're telling like, me that these guys are going to go out and try to knock each other out? The, uh, you put them against. Uh, any bum on the street, people are going to watch it to see how Mike Tyson... Oh, get out of here. Guys. Nobody's going to watch that crap because you know what Mike Tyson's going to do to the bum. He's going to knock him out. You're putting Roy Jones Jr., one of the most, most technical fighters of all time, in the ring with one of the most powerful boxers of all time. And both of them have said, you could say it's a, sp a spectacle, or whatever you want to call it, it's a circus. These guys are going to go out and they're going to put on a show. You can say whatever you want. I'm telling you right now, this I is going to be... Father Time is undefeated. No. <laughs> you don't tell that to Randy Couture. Don't say that to Randy Couture. Randy Couture knew to retire. Oh, really? He won a heavyweight championship when he was in his 40s. And he was able to do it. What happened oh, after I, he got crane uh, kicked? It doesn't matter. He still won the title when he was 40 years old. So Father Time means that he can't box anymore? Mike. Come Mike. on, man. That's... Mike, I'm that sorry. I was trying to get you How's in before sound? you got to the bottom of your latte it. there. It's bullshit. That's what I'm going to say. Mike, Mike, would you like to weigh in on in here? On, on, on the Tyson fight? <laughs> I can't say it without uh, laughing. Sorry. So, I mean, I don't see on it. I know they're going to fight. Yeah, they're two old guys. We get it. They're out of their prime. It's exhibition, yada, yada, yada. But they're two guys that want to fight. 
So who gives a shit who's saying it's a circus act or anything like that? If these two guys want to fight, let them fight. They're grown-ass men. You know what? They've had their time in boxing. they put their name out there. But as far as who's going to win, I think they're both going to go out there and they're going to throw down. And I don't see Roy Jones Jr. hurting Mike Tyson. I'm sorry. I agree with you. I, I think Tyson will win the fight. I think it'll be a third round, second, early second round knockout by Mike Tyson. I think he's going to hurt him. I, you, you guys, I, I, don't know, I don't know what you guys are watching, but go watch Instagram. Go watch what Mike Tyson is doing right now. This guy is hitting speed bags. He, this is, I'm not saying this is Well, I don't think Mike anybody Tyson. said that Tyson's not going to win. Uh, a lot of people don't think he's going to win because a bo- they, say, they think a boxer is going to beat out a brawler. And that's what they think Mike Tyson's going to do in this match. He's going to brawl Roy Jones Jr. And if that happens, Tyson needs to understand you can wear yourself out, especially being at age, Mr. Old Timer. He's going to have to control his stamina and his breathing technique, as you all know, because your coach is, right, Chris? So, so which fight am I talking about? We're talking about the Tyson <laughs> fight. You guys. We're talking about the Tyson fight. Don't worry, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get to your gyms, okay? Because all of you guys, you have your own gyms. Should, should we? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get two? you guys. I'm gonna get you guys. Well, I think, I think um, it's gonna be the old-fashioned Tyson yeah. wins if it goes between the first three to four rounds, and then Jones wins if it goes beyond that because Tyson's gonna gas out. That's been Mike Tyson's mo for most of his career. Go ahead, Chris. Um, to be honest with you, same thing that Mike, Mike said. You know, put away all the stuff of like the spectacle that this is. These two guys want to fight. They think they still have a little bit left. But you know what? Uh, what when was it? Just not too long ago that two guys got back into a cage that they thought could fight, and it was a shit show. Uh, Who was that? I think that was Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell <laughs> again. Yep. Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz. That was yep. the They're dumbest different. Fight ever. That's so different. I, this is different. Whatever. It's different, Chris. My you, mean, is that was, that, you, mean, you, mean, you mean that was worse than uh, Tito versus Alberto Del Rio? Uh, <laughs> no. Worse than that? No. Oh, oh, I'm going to get you guys really wound my, up, man. I'm going to get them. With them? Oh, yeah. They're Impossible. Friends. Friends. You're not going to get them. I'm going to get them. You're not going to get I'm these gonna guys get rattled. It I'm going to get them. that way. I'm going to get them. These guys don't rattle. I'm finding it. I'm going to find it. Do you know it. what these guys go through I've, on a daily basis? Well, we'll get to that later, though. Yeah. But do you know what these guys, these guys don't get rattled. They're not surprised by anything you tell them. Well, well, Trust me. Well, These guys deal with memberships. Oh. Okay, and people that don't pay them. Trust me, they've heard it all. Oh, so, uh, so I hope everybody's listening to this conversation. Let them. In the show. It's nothing that we haven't said before. <laughs> it's nothing. Please. <laughs> why don't you, uh, you know, anyway. why don't you um, tell everybody who we're talking to? Once again, we have Master Kai Evers from in Queens, New York, over at Kai Next Level. We have Mike Pagano over at Royal MMA. We have Chris Papandria, the voice from the hills. You don't see him, but he's there. <laughs> Over in Indiana at Dynamic Jiu Jitsu. <sighs> and we figure we have a nice little coaching I'm show. The... So, oh, Christ. Here he goes. What were you about to say? I'm the man behind the curtain. He's the man behind the curtain. Yeah. He, he's, he's, he's very humble. He's, he's shy. He's shy. He's very shy. <laughs> it happens. He's always been a very shy person. You know. Uh, but anyway, going on, getting off of this, getting off of what? this. What? This is a good conversation. Why oh, is it ridiculous? Anthony, everything is ridiculous to you it when is. I bring it up. It is. That's, that's this is like is. one step away from that barbershop conversation in oh. Coming to America. Barbershop? He was 155 years old when besides, he fought Joe Lewis. Besides <laughs> UFC 252 coming up, what else is there to talk about when it comes how to about combat this? sports? How about this? What's more importantly, how is everybody's gyms going Yeah, let's hear with this. all of this crap going on? Kai? Kai, it's Jesus, Kai. Uh, I there didn't we go. Hear you. Oh, me? Oh, okay. so, my, gym, uh, my gym's going very well. I can't complain about nothing. I've been very lucky. Uh, the pandemic came and uh, the pandemic went over here, so it was very. It was. Uh, I lost some income over and some students over the time, but uh, the government let us uh, open up. So I went from ninety four uh, after schoolers down to about thirty summer campers. But I doubled enrollments for everything, so I kind of almost uh, 
got close to my normal average when it comes to that also too. Uh, adult uh, MMA is through the roof. I because uh, when you kind of like the only game in town, because most people are either not even open or they're scared to open or they went out of business because they just couldn't afford to keep going. Uh, so un unfortunately, I don't like to uh, enjoy somebody else's uh, shortcomings or failures because it really is tragic that uh, people have lost their livelihoods and have lost uh, a lot of their businesses that they've had for many years. But for people that have stood in it, like myself, uh, we are profiting from there. Same thing like uh, fitness. I get people that call me all the time and they're like, oh, my God, thank God you're open. We have nothing else to do. So my fitness is through the roof also, too. My kids program is a, is a little uh, small as of right now because I think some people are still a little worried about the pandemic when it comes to the kids. But uh, the summer camp has done well. Traditionally, uh, August is just a slow month in general for kids, uh, martial arts also, because a lot of people go on vacations and stuff too. So uh, we're doing well. We're just getting everybody just off, you know, the hiatus. We got a lot of quarantine, fat people and people that were, weren't training, and we're getting them back into the, the mix of everything. I've got a lot of guys that were training in parks and stuff. They're just happy to just be on the mats nowadays. Mike, how are you guys doing over there? <clears throat> yes, um... Yeah, so the whole thing, because we're down here in Maryland, so, uh, you know, we closed up shop, obviously, in, in March, and actually what's crazy is at the same time, I uh, I was teaching and tore my meniscus in March as well, so I had to have surgery, so kind of played out in my favor, um, and then we opened back up um, beginning of July with our, you know, little stipulations and guidelines that we have to follow. What I've done is I've uh, taken my classes for the kids' class, and I've separated my littles and bigs. So my littles are at the end of the week, like Fridays, like right now they're in there. And I think I got 12 in there right now. And then um, my bigs, they do Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And um, I've actually had more signups lately uh, than anything. And because I'm so, you know, I'm former military and pro-military and, and I'm, an, I'm about to become an officer myself, I get a lot of military uh, LEOs and stuff like that. So we're very open to that community. I've had a lot of sign-ups since we're right outside of D.C. from, um, you know, SWAT guys, uh, the FBI guys, the marshals, and stuff like that. So we're, we're pretty booming, and, and our MMA classes are, are going really strong, too. We just have to follow um, certain guidelines, like I said. And, and um, myself and Chad LeBrun from the lab over in Fredericksburg came up with an idea to kind of help gyms get going again. Um, what we do is, we pull together some black belts and we do a seminar for each of our schools and it's a donate whatever you can to help raise money for the whole COVID problem that the schools had a hard time with. So actually tomorrow we're running a seminar for our school and those black belts and stuff that come to help me out, I'm going to travel to their school and run a free seminar for them, a uh, jiu-jitsu seminar for them to raise money for their school as well. So we're, we're pumping pretty well, man. We're in here every, every day of the week, except for Sunday, you know, even, um, Mike, the owner of the school, his classes are pretty cool too. Uh, in the beginning, they in the beginning they weren't like they started picking up. I'd say after the second or third week, but we're we're full, man. Nice. And Mr. Papandrea, that's right, the man who discovered this talent right here. Oh God, many moons ago, oh. <laughs> planted the seed. Did you find him in Antarctica? <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you right now. I think even he was just like, where the hell did this guy come from when I first met him? Yeah, that's right. We're talking about you, Chris. Go right ahead. How's everything going down there at Dynamic? Uh, there, it's going well. Um, in our area, we've been, you know, northern Indiana. We're kind of in, in the middle of nowhere, so our cases have actually been pretty low um, as opposed to, like, down in the... That's, that's the trick, the everybody. That's the trick. North. Take your loved ones, leave them out in the woods... Is that what you do? For about, take about two <laughs> weeks that what away. You, do? you leave them out in the woods? We don't have woods out in Queens, dude. <laughs> we had woods in Queens. Yeah, Trust forest, me, it would be a lot more hills, interesting. There are, there are woods. Who the hell lives in Forest Hills? I don't live in Forest Hills. That's borderline Queens right there, man. That's borderline Queens. I don't live in Queens. borderline Queens. I mean, there are woods, woods over there in I'm Queens. Sorry. Wait, Chris is talking. Sorry, Chris. I'm sorry, Go ahead. Chris. Children. <laughs> okay. Um. So basically our classes are running back to normal. Um, as far as like uh, standards and stipulations that we have to abide by the gym, we, we don't have to do like the social distancing stuff as much. Um, 
because of the square footage in our school, we can have low numbers in the building at one time. So we kind of are under the radar on that side of it. Um, our kids' classes, we already have, we have two age group classes. So our four to eight year olds, that class has actually grown. Um, it's actually doubled the number that we've had over the past few weeks. Um, whereas our big kids class, which is like eight to 13 year olds, that one, I think some parents were kind of hesitant to bring their kids back just yet. Um, especially here, we're doing a whole lot of e-learning for kids in school. So I think that's part of it too, is that they're not ready to bring their kids back to everybody yet. So, uh, that class is probably about half the size as it normally is. Our adult class is still, you know, plugging away. Um, we're, we're there pretty much every day, um, Monday, well, Sunday through Thursday. And then we also have the local high school wrestling team uh, using our mats because, you know, Indiana, they can't wrestle. Like, they can't practice because of uh, the school basically not being in session. Mm-hmm. So no, no – kids or coaches can be on the school premises after hours or during hours because we're all doing this e-learning crap. So we did because our school was technically a club, they get away with that through the um, Indiana High School Athletic Association. So they're able to at least get some mat time in and wrestle while they're doing, while they're not in school basically. But us, yeah, I mean, we're we're doing fine so far. Um, I don't foresee a real resurgence in our area. And then we also have uh, a police department that's about 40 minutes away that's using us as their uh, combatives or defensive tactics school, basically, since the whole COVID and Floyd incident. As you guys know, we're talking, this is the Coach's Show, as Anthony calls it, with Kai, Well, what the hell would you Mike call it? It's Chris. the Coach's Show. Yeah, and you know, I, I should be called a coach too, man, because I got a team <laughs> myself. I've got a team myself. It's called Team Gratitude. Fantasy don't count. No, but there's no fantasy over here. I've got a team too, man. I, I'm, my team might be hiding under the desk, but my team is here, man. And I, I'm sorry, you, my friend, are a <laughs> little... You, you, you just got that. It went over his head for a second. It still is going over my head. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Come on, Kai. No, you know what you I'm talking know about, man. I'm a little crazy, but you know Kai what I'm talking no about. Kai has no idea what the hell you're talking about. I, come, come on, man. No. Come on. It went over your head, man. It's okay. Listen, it's okay. Listen, it's only fair to have a coach's show oh. because you know something? Half the time you hear fighters complain about what they don't like. Mm. Your promoters complain about what they don't like and how yep. to make things better. Mm. How often do you hear coaches talk about this, that, and everything? that? No, they have to stay silent. Why? So, they have a venue now. So, let's get into I, that. I like to get I, into I, that. I can I can list. I can list. See? See, you can't tell me. It's on the tips of everybody. Well, so, so we got three coaches. They have three gyms. So, what do you guys concentrate on? Do you concentrate on the youngsters? Are you trying to build up a... No, 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 no. What are they, they trying to do? They don't want that. They just talked about that. What, they, here I know what, I, what I, pisses you off the most... You piss me off the most. enrollment, members, and all that. What's your biggest pet peeve in dealing with gyms and the clientele? What's your biggest pet peeve? Not now. Let's call it general clientele. Not the fighters. You know that's a totally different animal. But just dealing with the – look at Mike. <laughs> Mike's priceless right now. <laughs> what's – just in general enrollment, what's the biggest pet peeve that you guys have in dealing with gyms? Because it takes a special kind of guy to say, yeah – I want to coach a whole bunch of different personalities like this. Mike, go ahead, Mike. You were, you were nodding before anybody else. Sorry. Uh, I don't I don't know. I, I've been teaching kids and adults and, and soldiers since 2008, so it's like uh, I've run across everything you can see under the sun, special needs, all, all of it. So um, I hear a lot of – let me say I hear a lot of complaints from people and martial artists especially, like, talking about, man, it's such a pain in the ass to teach kids. You know, it's just hard, you know. And I'm like, and how do you do it? I'm like, I I don't know. I just I enjoy it. To tell you the truth, I enjoy the kids sometimes more than the adults. The kids are the future. They're the sponges. And, like, it's just so great to see, like, them get lifted up and happy when, like, they pull off their first submission or, or their first sweep. You know, we're the – Mike Wilson said this the best owner, the other owner Royal is, we're the last guideline 
you know, the last stand for the kids right now, you know, in the world as coaches because on the streets or whatever they're doing, you know, they don't get that. We, we give them, you know, humbleness. We, we lift them up. We help them when they're down. You know, we make them stronger, you know, they're headstrong and just confident. Um, the one thing, the other thing I, I can say that does bother me is I hate it when parents try to tell you how to coach. Hey, Kai. Well, I can't Kai. Tell you. Me, little Johnny, <laughs> doesn't deserve a yellow belt. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. So, it's almost the same. It's, it's almost the same as, like, an armchair quarterback getting on a fighter's page to tell, like, tell them they suck, this and that, and, you know, you got knocked out. You know, stuff like that. Because let me tell you something right now. Have you ever been punched in the face before? No. 90% of the world has never been punched in the face before. And if they had been punched in the face before, they do one of two things. They coil up and cry like a bitch in the fetal position, or they fuck <laughs> and run away. People like us, we stand up, and people think there's no retaliation for their actions, but there is. You, when, when somebody tells you how to coach, you know, and I got, again, it's hard for me because I'm running my own program now. I don't work under somebody anymore. I've worked under somebody for years. I worked under Hoyce and Greg Thompson down at Rock. I worked under Dan and Jim Miller. I worked under Alan Shabaro. And now I work on my own. So now I have to be very careful of how to put things, you know? So I can't just be like, hey, fuck you. You know, I can't say that. You know, and it just, I mean, you could. It depends on the class. So here's 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 one thing. I got three kids in in my gym, right? I got three three kids in my gym, and the dad gets really upset because the kids are not like him. He puts them in jujitsu because he wants them to be able to take care of themselves. You know, if something happens and be strong minded, stuff like that. You know, which is great, but they don't want to be there, so they're kind of being forced, right? So it kind of kills the vibe of the class at times, and. If, if they're in competition, which he makes them do one competition a year, they have to. If they're in competition and I'm coaching, they'll look for his approval, especially if he's in the room. They'll look over for his approval if they're getting, like, smashed or whatever, and they'll start getting upset. So it's almost like at times you have to, like, go back to, like, when we used to wrestle, and coach would just shut everybody the fuck out of the room, and it's time to wrestle. Like, nobody's allowed in. And, and it just it sucks because – I kind of have to step in front of them at times and look down at them and be like, hey, look, don't worry about it right now. You're doing good, man. Just keep doing what you're, what you're doing. All right? It's not going to come easy. Don't worry about what your dad thinks right now. He's not on the mat rolling. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know? And it, it just sucks. Kai? <laughs> oh, man. Should I bring out my book and shit? <laughs> uh I would probably say my bet, my biggest pet peeve is very similar to what he was saying, but uh, I'm I have a very big pet peeve for self entitlement. So there's so many people that want to be champions. There's so many people that want their kids to be black belts. There's so many people that want to win fights. There's so many people that think that they're just going to be awarded this and not have to put in any hard work. You know, like people want to know why they come in once every other week and why they're not getting better or once why they come in once a month or once every other month or they leave for three to four months. And when they come back, they're getting killed and smashed and why they don't deserve their next rank or why they haven't won their next fight. Or even I've got fighters that are on a losing streak and want to know when their next big opportunity is coming. No, you have to work your way back up. Okay, if you lost your last three fights. You need to go to smaller organizations and win one, two, three more fights before we can bring you back to those organizations. The same thing with kids that uh, parents that come on the floor. I've had a parent come in and say, "Hey, how much is a black belt?" And I'm like, "What do you mean, how much is a black belt?" <laughs> like, "Oh, my kid is a my kid is a red belt. I want him to get a black belt." I was like, "Well, you can literally go to eBay and it'll cost you ten dollars, and you can have it shipped over." Because that is pretty much the same thing. My certificate isn't going to change your kid's skill level any. So, but uh, parents nowadays have become very soft on their kids. And I, I can't stand when parents come in and go, I, well, I can't control my four-year-old. I can't control my five-year-old. Well, do you think your five-year-old wants to take a shower? Do you think your five-year-old wants to eat his vegetables? Do you think your five-year-old wants to brush his teeth? Do you, force, you think your five-year-old wants to go to school? Do you force your kid on a regular basis? If you believe it's a benefit for your child, then you're going to force them to do things because if they knew better, then they'd be an adult or they'd be in charge of their own life. Since you're in control of their life until age 18, 
you're going to lay the brick and foundations for them. But everybody thinks nowadays everything should be handed to them. Like when you come into the gym, you think that uh, it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard work. You're going to dedicate this hard work. That's why it's called working out. It is work. So the benefit is you getting better and the benefit is you actually learning some things to help survive. Uh, we're the last defense when a mom doesn't want a uh, kid isn't being disciplined. Guess what? They drop them in our door. Uh, unfortunately, if a female has been attacked, guess what they want to learn? They want to get their confidence back. They come to our door. Uh, when you have somebody who has low self-esteem or low confidence, they come to our door. We got to be their, their fathers at some times, their mentors at some times, their guidance counselor at some time. We got to be their therapist because if uh, Anthony's seen my fitness class, I don't hear everything <laughs> that there is. I know whose husbands ain't doing what and who cheating on who and who ain't getting this. We got to be all these different Am I invited to the gossip, I, man? I, I I could be talking about this on no, my show. You don't, you don't want to be involved in that. Why? No, this would be gets, fun, man. It gets I, I like this, especially when there are the, the two. Never mind. I love no, gossip. No, 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 I love no, no, no. gossip. I, but we, when we, the we, love we, triangle becomes like part of the damn classroom, that's not good. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not. It's yeah, you know. But, uh, but no. that's my my main thing. It's just the self entitlement. Like you don't understand that if you want to win these world titles, you need to put in more work than your regular job. If you want to win this next tournament, you need to put in all this work. Okay, if you're stuck at second place, guess what? You're not working harder and out working first place. It's just what it is. You need to put in the work. And you got to, I hate that I've dedicated so much time, like 30 years of my life into martial arts. And you guys can't dedicate like six months to a year. I was like, what do you even think I'm going to show you in six months to a year? You're going to get very few basics in that amount of time. And hopefully that will help you out in life. But if you want to actually learn and make this part of your life, it's literally a culture. You need to develop yourself into this kind of like a cult. But it's this, it's his own family. Anybody who's been in the martial art world, they know this person who knows this person who knows this person who knows this person. Everybody knows everybody. It's a very small community. And if you want to be part of that life, you need to dedicate that time. Mr. Papandrea. Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see here. He actually just pulled out a list. I don't know if anybody heard that. That was the notebook. Oh, he was getting ready open. for this. This, this was, was a perfect for him. This is perfect for him. Oh, God. <laughs> well, let me see. Um, probably the stuff that, you know, the, sh the stuff that bothers me the most is being a coach and makes me just want me to pull my hair out half the time is just unnecessary BS and drama. That's what it is. It drives me crazy. Part of it, too, is like people walking in the door and they've been there for a little while and then they think they're entitled to have a say at the school. Or they can tell me what they can do in the school when I'm not around. Yeah, that doesn't work. Last time I checked, it was my school. Um, but that, that's the biggest thing, like drama. Putting out, that's the one thing that people I don't think see on the outside, student wise is the number of little, like, fires that coaches have to pull, put out silently when nobody's watching. Like, we have to deal with this person, mad at this person because, oh, I don't know, they stole their gear. Or this person's mad at this person because, oh, this person got promoted before me. Or, you know, parents are pissed off because, well, why did my kid not get promoted and that kid did? That kid did. And, and I think my kid's better. Well, I'm a coach, and I decide who gets promoted. But Your kid sucks. That's, <laughs> like, the drama that just drives me freaking crazy. Like, I don't have a lot of hair on top of my head right now. I just got a haircut. But it makes me want to pull my damn hair out half the time. I just sit there and I want to like, bang my head off the desk. Um, let's see, what else? Dating. Dating in the school. Don't do it. I don't care. Like, coaches are not allowed to date students, period. Like, because then you sit down, you ha then you have to have a conversation. <laughs> say, Did he okay, say well, beat or beat? Break up. Date. Oh. Date. I thought he said beat. Look, I mean, look at Mike. Look at Mike. I thought right he said now. beat. Mike and Kyle like, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I heard beats uh, for a second there. In relations. We, we, got, we got a different Better <laughs> I was about to say, what is this abusive gym over here? <laughs> <laughs> no, just, no, no, 
Yeah, why? I I know what he I know what he was doing. I was just thinking. I'm I'm all over the place with this. But I'm I'm sorry, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. No, like having coaches and and students date each other. That's not good for anybody because then you have to sit there and be like, all right, well, you two break up. Who gets to stay? Because you, as a coach, you're not paying me because you're you're teaching for me. They're paying students. So who do I decide who goes first? So. (laughs) <laughs> don't do it. Unless you've been in a relationship prior and you come in and train. That's one thing. Like we had that where a couple came in and they were dating prior to them training. Well, I'm not going to say anything. They end up both as coaches now. So they're not going anywhere. But like this other crap about the whole, the whole life. Oh, you know, parents coaching kids. There's a reason why the instructors are coaching the kids. We know what we're doing. Shut up, sit down, have a Coke and a smile. <laughs> well, well, that's let's do our jobs, please. That, that's that's Chris's uh, famous saying: "Sit down and grab a Coke and smile." That's that's Chris right there. Basically, yeah. Uh, I like it. Simple. But you're, you're training people not to drink Coke. Now all of a sudden you're telling them to drink. A no, Coke? he's talking about the parents. They didn't pay to get trained. Oh, okay. Well, well, you hand so off the kids. You do train you parents, do you? You do train parents, don't you? If you they want to train, train, but the ones that normally are the ones that have the opinions are the ones that don't train. Ah, they're the ones that just sit there, wait for yep. the, wait for the class to end. So, so right before uh, guys, uh, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get more in uh, with. I have a couple of things that I I want to ask you guys about. Uh, Old fights that happened that me and Anthony have been fighting, you know, and oh, arguing for love about. Of Christ, that we're bringing two it years up. Ago. We're bringing it back. I want to ask them for their honest opinion, and probably will take your damn side, which really annoys the hell out of me. But Speedy, who got well, the better deal of the Louisiana Purchase right oh, get now? Get out of here, the Louisiana what the hell Purchase? You're you're a Boston Tea Party for me, man. Party, okay. Anyways, uh, when we come back, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna be on with Kai, Mike, and Chris here on the Great. What is it? Caged in MMA. Come on, man. What are you doing over there? It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's time! Introducing first... Fighting out of the blue corner. Right there, right there. Hold on, right there. Boom, I faked him. Oh, whoa. That was, whoa. I'm back. But, Mother Babo, how you say that name? I'm going to go home tonight. I'm going to drink a Coors Light. Fighting out of the red corner. I completely dominated that fifth round. That fifth round want me to fight. From the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. <laughs> show in America, Caged in MMA. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Caged in MMA. I'm your host, Ella Marks, my co-host, Anthony Andriosi. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, you could do this. You can go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. You can call us. Yes, you can call our conference call and ask whatever questions you want with Kai, Mike, and Chris, all you have to do is dial 978-990-5259. Again, it's 978-990-5259. Access code. This is important. When they ask you for an access code, 682120. Again, the access code, 682120. Speedy, post that up. Um, as you guys know, we are talking to Kai uh, we're talking to Mike, and we're talking to Chris. Uh, guys, I, I do want to get into this, and I, I know we're talking about your gyms, and, and I, I love speaking about the, the growth of your gyms and, and, and where you guys are going with this whole COVID-19 because it's really uh, destructed. Not only – how about the hurricane that hit us over here in New York? It completely destroyed a ton of different places. People lost electricity. Um, a lot of problems out here in New York. Really, for the last past year, there's been more problems – 
this year than it has been in almost 25 years. I'm not even talking about hurricanes. We're talking about COVID with a virus, uh, situations where people are having no jobs. I, I think it's at the highest uh, it's ever been in the United States since the 1970s or 1960s. So uh, we're having a lot of problems right now, and the United States is just completely bankrupt. But I don't even want to get into that because I don't want – we're not here to have a sad, sopping story. I want to get into – uh, me and Anthony argue about certain fights, and <laughs> Anthony st- seems to think that everybody has his side on this, and a lot of the fighters did not have his uh, his side who? on this. Uh, who? Do you want me to name him? Mike didn't. Uh, Mike, the, Mike who? Mike from Bobby Campbell's uh, event. He didn't. Uh, when? He didn't. What do you mean when? That he didn't agree to. He what? didn't agree with you with the Gagey thing. He didn't. He didn't. Wrong. Yeah, you know, he did not agree with you. Wrong. He did. Anthony. He did not agree with. I'm you. telling you right now. I'm he telling you right now. Do you want me to bring the clip back up? You know you're not going to do that. I'm not not right now, but I'll do it next time. Uh, next time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll yeah, do it next exactly. time. Absolutely. Yeah. How am I going to pull it up right now? Exactly. I'm hosting so a damn show. And I'm working clip. a goddamn board. And this guy, uh, you listen to this guy right here, man, guys. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. So going into guys, the yes. – You guys just need to hug this out. Nah, we – this no, – this, okay. this, Social distancing. Yeah, so. social distancing is right, man. <laughs> yeah, anyways. Uh, you know, he, he thought, you know, with the Khabib, the, the Ferguson <laughs> – the Ferguson and Gagey fight, he believes that it's – Ferguson, it's not – it's it's Ferguson's fault for getting into the ring and fighting Gagey. And I came out and said, why is, Fer- why is it Ferguson's fault? Because two weeks before the fight, when he expected Khabib, because Khabib was here in the United States, decided to fly back to his family two weeks before the fight. Oh, why am I not surprised? Speedy, there's going to be another no, 3-0. Not, I, I, no, it's not going to be 3-0 because 3-0. to me, and, it, and if, it, if it is 3-0, well, then I'm going to argue my point just like I always do. Mm-hmm. And you go into the fight. Ferguson knows that he needs to make the money. He probably knows that the UFC, for the last couple of years, have really stinged him for fights. Go look how many fights he's fought in the last four years. Not many. And, yes, he was injured for eight months, and he did get his knee. He made his knee healthy. He didn't get physical therapy. He did it himself. He trained himself. All that other things. And he believes that they're aliens, okay? Whatever the case is, the guy believes in aliens. But, nevertheless, going into the fight, he, Ferguson went into that fight, and he took that fight – Knowing on a whim that he's finding a guy that's a lot more powerful than Khabib. He is a lot more powerful than Khabib. And the fact that he was training for the last three or four months to fight Khabib. And then all of a sudden, two weeks before, he's going to take the fight because he's getting full pay. He's not going to – and he, he, yes, he's the better fighter. A lot of people thought he was a, he was a better fighter. Are you going to ask them the damn question? Yes. What did you guys think of the fight? Do you think – do you think – uh, Ferguson got screwed. Now all of a sudden he's the fifth ranked fighter in his division when he had the opportunity. He was the number one contender for the last year and a half. Do you think it's fair or, that no, the UFC... No, I'll make it even better for you. I'll make it even easier for what? your argument. What? Do you think it was fair to Ferguson that someone who he was prepping to fight bails and then he had to go against Gagey? Do you think that he was wronged? Do you think Ferguson... Was wrong. Well, first of all, he's not wrong because he took the fight because he wanted the money. He wanted the money. And he didn't train against that fighter. So he was going into the fight on a whim because he wanted the money. He's got to pay bills too, man. Of course. Just like everybody else. That's not a. Uh, But that's that's why he took the fight. That's not the argument. And he got screwed because now he's never going to get a title shot. Can we find out what they wanted? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, Mike, Mike, let's start with you, Mike. Go ahead. What do you think, Mike? (laughs) Do you think it was? Do you think uh, it was well, an injustice? I, no, he, he he's a grown ass man. He's fought his fight, man. Look, <laughs> you're gonna take the fight or not take the fight. He's been how long has he been laid off for with injuries and stuff like that? Just like you said, so he's gonna have to step up, take the fight, and understand the shit happened. You know what what's he's gonna do? Not take the fight? I mean, that's on him, man. He took the fight. He lost the fight. I mean, he's. Hopefully he'll crawl, claw, you know. Crawl it's back hard, up the ladder Mike. You know it's hard to claw up the ladder for the UFC. You know it's hard, and you know Dana White don't like him. But he, well, that's on him though, man. He knew better. He took that fight, man. He had, he's his own man, and honestly, it's his manager too. I mean, he changed his manager team. He changed his manager said. team. He changed his management team. You need to change it back to. <laughs> that tells you something right there, doesn't it? He changed his management team. He did. 
And, and, and a lot of people have changed their management team, uh, team in the last couple of weeks, actually. Went to the, practically the same team and even new agents, new agency uh, for uh, endorsements. These guys, um, I saw Ferguson. Who else? There was a couple of fighters that went to. Uh, Dominance MMA. Yes. But let's get now to Kai. Don't, you see, I'm not changing starting, anything. We're already starting. I'm Here's not changing one. anything. One. That's not one for you. That's not one for you. That's not one for me. That's not one for you. Okay. He got uh, screwed. He got screwed. You're going to tell me that he fell all the way to number five losing that fight? This is the guy <laughs> right. that was the number one contender. Mike. He won He won seven straight fights. Mike, who's is it for going into the fight, Mike? Seven straight fights. Seven straight fights, and all the all of a sudden got kicked off to number five. Conor McGregor had one fight, and he's the number one number one contender, a number two contender, Mike, once again, right behind you, Justin Gagey. Can you Give repeat your answer, Mike? Give me a break. Can you repeat your it's answer? Bullshit. Who's, who's it's bullshit. Whose fault was it? It's bullshit. Well, I can't even get into that. I mean, there's too many politics in fucking fighting, man. The the pound for pound ranking shit doesn't even matter anymore. It really doesn't. It does to the UFC. Can't argue about that. It does to the UFC. It does not. That shit does not matter anymore. I don't give a fuck what they tell you. I don't care what they tell you. Go look at how they set up the fights. They are looking at rankings. They put the power rank- rankings. They look at the power rankings of each division. That gives you the opportunity to fight. As you win, you move up. How do you drop five spaces losing one fight where you only you, you only found out you were going to fight this guy two weeks before it's, the fight? It's the UFC ranking system. It, they can do whatever they want. Obviously, they can do whatever well, they want, just like pushing uh, them back to number five. Unfortunately, people dropping out last minute and replacement fighters coming in to save the fight is a very common thing that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. It happens with my fighters. Bellator just called me uh, probably on on Saturday for a fight for the next Friday. And we were trying to piece it together for the next three days uh, prior to it. It wound up falling through on Wednesday for a, fri- a Friday fight. So uh, last minute fights come all the time. Uh, the fighter has a choice. They can either... If they were preparing for another fighter and they want to wait for that fighter to either come back because they had injuries or the fighter uh, called out because they were sick or whatever the reason why the, the fighter came in, then the fighter has that opportunity to choose to do that. Unfortunately, then you come to the money side. Mm-hmm. They're just not going to get paid. You don't do your job. You don't get paid. So if it's is it fair? I think it's fair because nobody put a gun to his head and forced him to take the fight. How do you he know? How do you know he didn't get? How do you know he didn't get a raise on that? And I how, for Khabib. Kai, how do you know he didn't get a raise on that? How do you know he didn't get offered twenty extra, thirty extra thousand dollars to get in that fight? So obviously you can you can push him off. Now you look at Dana White. Dana White makes how many? How much did that uh, that bout get? Uh, that card get? I think I think that card made one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty million dollars a pay per view. Well, how much did these? Dana, fighters get white is always going to get money of course like, he he's is going to get paid no matter what he's going to get paid if this fighter drops out this fighter drops out he'll piece together something to make sure that his bottom line is always going to be there but when it comes to the fighter you have to decide on your own personal ranking if he was preparing for khabib and he didn't feel that he was never going to fight was khabib. what he was preparing for then you don't take the fight unfortunately if you don't take the fight you don't get paid if he thinks his bills are more important than his career and his rankings, then he took the fight, which is what he did. If he decides that, no, I want to wait a few months for Khabib to come back, and then we'll do the fight all over again and do it then, then he'll wait. But unfortunately, you don't get paid. I don't think it was unfair to him that that happened because it's not something that was, you know. It's not unfair that he lost. That's not what I'm saying. It's unfair that he went from number one contender to the number five contender in one fight. One fight. Oh, this guy. Is, uh, this guy was seven and zero. Oh. Rankings, rankings, rankings it, are all it, over the place. I like, know, but it hurt. It, it hurts him. Yeah, they don't have any stepping stone for it. Like number five doesn't go against number four, and then the winner of that goes against number three, and then the winner of that goes against number two, and then number two go against number one. They don't put things together like that. They literally rank them kind of like for uh, popularity. Okay, we think this match should be this match. Let's see who's going to watch this match and this match together, put them together. And then after whoever wins, let's just put them somewhere over here. I had a fighter that <coughs> beat the number one fighter and then was still ranked underneath the fighter they beat. Yeah, but so, that's, 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 so I, me, but that's, like, I even went that, over because it was on a, on a, on a, website, that's a different organization. Uh, a that's a different organization, and, Kai, because if in the, in the UFC, you see it. Once they lose a fight, they dip. And if you don't, and if they try to match out the fighters by where they're ranking. Go look at when when they're, the, some of these fighters are fighting. Actually, that's not always true. Not always true. Not always true. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It doesn't always happen. But normally, that's how they start. They state the fights. The big fights or the main event fights. They kind of 
they kind of put you by the ranking. If, you, if you're the number one contender, and right now the number two contender is fighting the four contender to try to move up to the number two contender, the number three contender will fight the number one contender. But all in all, if you're not in that various of one, two, three, and four, you're not getting a title shot. You're just not. And Ferguson went from one to five. And I'm sorry, Ferguson, it took Ferguson. Look how long it took Ferguson to get to that number one contender. He won seven or eight fights in a row. Seven or eight fights in a row to get there. Not even Conor McGregor did have to do that. Conor McGregor had to win one fight. One fight. Well, and he's the number Conor, two contender. Conor McGregor's his own animal there. That's and, fine. And, That's fine. That doesn't, he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve it. Chris, what do you oh, think? I don't think Conor McGregor uh, deserves his spot in line just because he beat Cowboy Cerrone, yeah. who's not even the number one contender to go back up there. But when it comes to the number one who's going to grease Dana White's pockets the most, he holds that spot for everybody. There's nobody in the UFC right now who won't fight Conor McGregor because they know it's going to be a huge payday. So they fight Conor because, not because of his ranking and his skill. They fight him because of his, his money. And he's going to bring that purse and that popularity there. And Connor has earned his way to the top to pick and choose how he wants to match up. With who did he, he beat? Who did he beat, Kai? Who did he beat besides uh, Jose Aldo? Uh, who did he beat? Who did he beat? He beat two, unfortunately, he beat two champions. Well, who? Yeah. Who? Dustin Poirier. Poirier. Oh yeah, Just, Dustin Poirier. Oh, he's he's a fantastic fighter. Go no, ahead. but he literally beat the champions. He beat <laughs> You're the one forty-five champion. And he beat the one fifty-five champion. So at that particular time, uh. Those people were the top dogs in the in the business, so he did beat them. But unfortunately, it's not saying that he's the best fighter that's out there. Nobody's ever going to say that Conor McGregor is the number one fighter pound for pound ever. But he, he was in his division for a while. Fight, so he was in his. Fight. I fight Conor McGregor right now on two weeks' notice, just so I can get a couple of mil. But Kai, he I'm was. Sure everybody on this call will Kai, fight Conor right now. Kai, he was the number one. Some kind of money. Kai, he was the number one guy at one fifty five for almost two years. He was. He was the number one guy. Nobody else. Khabib, even as undefeated as he was, Ferguson winning all those fights in a row. Conor McGregor was the number one guy in that weight class for two years before Nate Diaz choked him out. That's what happened. In a welterweight fight. That, that's fine. But he was he, uh, Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, sorry. That's, you're bringing up Khabib with it, though, too. It's like, who is Khabib's manager? Who's Khabib's manager? Wasn't his father? Ali. Mm -hmm. No. Dominance. Dominance MMA. Ali's Mm -hmm. his manager. Okay. And money makes the world go round, right? Mm -hmm. So Ali, his friends with Dana, they're all friends with other people overseas, sheiks and shit like that. So Tony Ferguson doesn't fucking matter. In the UFC's eyes, he does not matter. The ranking system does not matter. Mm. The UFC uses the ranking system very similar to the WWE. Why don't we go look at the line. go look at the fights right now and see where they're oh, ranked when they're fighting I tomorrow? That, yeah. I agree with that. The go UF, look at the fighters the right UFC, now. The here's UFC the, UFC storyline is very similar. It's it, that's what we call it a storyline. Because a perfect example. Let me of, put it to you like go ahead, this. Mike. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's let's put it like this. You guys all know who Sean Shorty Rock Santella is, right? Yes. Everybody yes. knows Sean. Yep. Right. Okay. Why the fuck are they letting people in that Shorty has beat and dominated like Blaine Shutt, but not Shorty? He, they literally told Shorty, we're not taking you, even though he's a number one contender in the U.S. He's number one for, for years, he, he, everywhere. Why would they not let him in? You know why? They don't like him. First, they didn't like his pain care. Oh, his medicals weren't fucking clear. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. No, it's just because you don't like him. Because you don't think he's going to make you money. So the ranking system is bullshit. When you start letting people in that are like fucking, I don't know, four and five or four and two over a guy that's 27 and or 29 and seven, mm-hmm. that's fucking crazy. Yes, it is crazy. But you, you, if you look at the way they set up the fights, go to UFC card right now, UFC 252. Go look at where they're ranked. They're almost right there with each other. One's going to hop the other guy. They're usually either three or four uh, positions away from each other. That's what they. That's how they set it up. You moved Ferguson from one to five. That is. That's like a smack in the face after one fight. 
And that's it. You know how long it takes a person to get back to where you want to go? He's not even going to get a shot for Gagey. He's not going to fight Gagey. He's not fighting Khabib, and he's not fighting Conor. You know how long They're going to have to give him two or three fights before that do even you, happens. Do you know how long it takes for him to get back up there? Look at Nate Diaz. Look at how, how much screwed money, him. How much money can he make you? That's how long it takes him to get back up there. Ferguson is a popular fighter. Ferguson, unfortunately, he's not, here's he's the not thing. Conor McGregor, but he's a here's popular fighter. Unfortunately, when it comes to Ferguson, all right, if you have like the real McCoys, the people that are educated in the sport, yes, Ferguson is a favorite fighter. Absolutely. For a commercial value, Ferguson doesn't ha- really have it. There's only two guys, John Jones and uh, Conor McGregor. Yeah, and they that's make it. money. Now, that's fine. That doesn't mean no, that they should be right. people, but unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, he's not a household name. Like, if I ask any of my staff here who John Jones is, they'll know who he is. If they ask who Connor is, they know who it is. But if I say, hey, do you know who this fighter is, that particular fighter, they're going to have no idea who he is uh, Do they watch? Is do they watch mixed martial arts? Yes. So how do they not know who Ferguson <laughs> is? <laughs> hey, hey, hold on. One quick. Jiminy, I don't know who, who who's Tony Ferguson? He's obviously a martial artist. <laughs> exactly, and she watches and she watches MMA with me, and we're gonna watch the fights this weekend. Well, she she knows his name. She knows who he is. How could you not? Because yeah, she, she heard him his name throughout this whole talking. That's oh she come heard. on! Everybody knows he ran from uh, a bunch of aliens. That's how everybody knows him. But uh, besides that, I unfortunately, mean, you want to know something, Chris? What do you guy, think? Unfortunately, Khabib is really not as well a name. A household name, as you might think. He's a huge fan favorite. You know I'm that. telling you right now. He is no, huge. No, no, In his country, he is. In, in his, his country, he definitely I'll tell you right now. If you go out into any freaking street in New York City and say, who the hell is Khabib? They're going to say, oh, he's that guy that used to wrestle bears when he was a little kid. Not not the number one fighter in the freaking world or anything like that. Do you remember last the last fight Khabib had? Who did he fight? Who did he fight? Who did he fight? You, you should know this. Conor McGregor. Right. Now, you half the crowd was Irish fans because they were like, ole, 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 ole. And then you heard your whole, all the other Russian fans. There were, there were people scream Khabib's name. They were screaming his name you just when they were it. choking what fans? him what fans? out. Say that again. What, what fans? I, I don't know. They might not be Russian. You heard American because you heard their names. You heard them screaming. It's like Khabib or whatever the hell they you, what's, we don't the know word, any... what's Khabib's name in English? Uh, Khabib. Yeah. Dude, trust me. It's not all Russian over there. You can't tell me there were all Russian fans over there rooting for Khabib. That's a that's a crock if you say so. I didn't say that. You uh, said that. That's a crock. He's got a lot of fans, man. I'm telling you. He right has now. a he's lot not of fans. A household he's man. not Conor McGregor. He's not John no. Jones. But he sells. How many? How much money did he make on that Conor fight? Not as much as Conor. No, no, of course not. Of course not, because of endorsements and all the different whiskey deals that he has right now with all his endorsements and sponsors. But what did he get on that that deal? I could tell you the exact number. How much? Fifteen million. Okay, how much did Conor make? Conor made a lot more than that. Okay, he made like what and... 35, 34 on that or whatever. He made he made a lot of money off that deal. Mm-hmm. And that's still it's still a lot of money. And Khabib Khabib earned every single dime of that. And Chris, what do you think? What do you think, Chris? So, so this is you know, Mike said it perfectly. Rankings don't matter because if you think about rankings. Look about look at when GSP was on the top of his game at the top of the weight class of the welterweight. Mm-hmm. Who is the number one contender for how many years? Uh, against uh, against GSP. Yeah, who, who was, was, Matt, one wasn't one it Matt Hughes? Wasn't class. it Matt Hughes? No. BJ Penn? Nope. 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 Who was it? Nope. Who was it? I'll give you John a hint. Finch. Who was there it? There you go. John Finch. Fitch. John Fitch. 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 It was John Fitch. Yeah, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu artist. Was he at the top of that weight class? He won a lot. How many years was John? He won a lot. But, yeah. But if you ask anybody on the street during that time who's watching the UFC, who's the number one contender, they wouldn't be able to name him. Why? Because Dana didn't really like him. Mm -hmm. He didn't put butts in the seat. Now, you look at that way, too. It was like, I don't feel bad for Tony at all. Because at the end of the day, you're a grown-ass man. You sign a contract. You can choose to break that contract at any point. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to fight, don't fucking fight. That's it's, being a coach. It, some, if Tony came to me during his time when he was fighting and said, I don't want to fight, well, I'd be like, well, it's your damn choice, but guess what? I'm not coaching you after that. So you're, you're sitting. Because si- you signed a contract. So, so wait a second. So you're sitting here because he's a grown ass man and he decided to sign the contract. And because he needed, he, yeah. he has bills to pay, he's got things to do, he's got a family to feed. 
you're, you're telling me that because he got into a fight, he's a grown-ass man, so it doesn't matter that he lost. It doesn't matter that he moved all the way to the fifth ranking, and he's probably never going to get a title shot again because he's been screwed not once, not twice, not three, but four times on fighting Khabib because Khabib, Khabib has been a bitch, and he hides in his little, his little turtle shell, and he doesn't want to fight him because he knows it's a mismatch. And that's why, technically, as you guys know as coaches, you know, a techni- you know techniques are what you know, you look at when, 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 you, when it comes to fighting, uh, the technical end of it is completely different when you're getting into the, you know, you're getting into the octagon. So a uh, technique is completely different. When, when you got Conor McGregor, of course, Khabib is a better fighter, better all around fighter than Conor. Conor doesn't stand chance against Khabib. He doesn't. He's a better chance of beating Justin Gagey because they're both guys that like to stand and pound. Uh, Ferguson is a guy that will stand and pound. He'll also take you to the ground. Co- Ferguson made a mistake and, Obviously, because he didn't really, he, he thought cock, you know, being cocky and as a cocky fighter, he thought he was going to go into this fight knowing that there was two weeks uh, in really conditioning getting into this fight. And you're going to say, well, Gagey didn't have any time either. Well, so Gagey, Gagey had nothing to lose. Gagey had nothing to lose, everything to win. Ferguson had everything to lose and everything to win on this. So that was the reason why he fought this fight. Now, if he backed out of this fight, everybody, just like they attacked Khabib, because a lot of people attacked Khabib after he went over the way to Russia, including this guy right over here taking oh, shots of him. Yes, this guy taking shots at him. What, what, what are you going to say? You didn't say shit. What do you mean? What do you mean? I, honestly, I did too. I did too. Honestly. I did too. But honestly. you said it too. You okay. said it too. So he ran away. He ran away, and Ferguson wasn't a bitch. He took the fight, which he shouldn't have. And I'll say that again. He shouldn't have taken the fight because it was a mismatch. You didn't train for a guy that's a stand-up power fighter that loves to, to swing at you. And, and he got caught not once, not twice, but maybe multiple, multiple times. And that's why he lost the fight. He completely got his face beat in. Was, so, that, was that a conti- – it kills me that we're still talking about this stupid-ass fight. Why? Because it's over. It's done. He lost. Tough shit. You took it. It's over. You needed the money. You took I it. Have, it's over. I have my own every opinions. Every single toward, person. I have my own opinions toward this. Every toward this single Anthony. person. And they okay, do, too. And I want to know their opinion because they're choice. coaches. Okay? Yeah, and what did they say? And you all don't right, like so, the fact that they also – So this is a coach thing. show, and I'm a – on Meanwhile, a need to know basis. What's more I'm a fan. interesting is you have two guys now that are supposed to fight in October, I believe. Yes. Gagey and Khabib. Yes. And they both have the same damn manager. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, so for somebody who likes playing a conspiracy theory of rankings, you got two guys who have the same damn manager. Gagey who doesn't. The same fight. Gagey doesn't stand a chance. Gagey doesn't stand a chance in that fight. Mike's face right now is priceless. He doesn't stand a. <laughs> he doesn't chance. He doesn't stand a chance in that fight. Who? I just told you, Justin Gagey doesn't stand this. a chance. From a, this is a question I have for, for our three experts. From a commercial standing mm-hmm. in regards to this championship fight between the number one and <laughs> number whatever the, contender, the yeah. okay, how good do you think the pay-per-view numbers are going to be for this fight? A lot better than I personally think, think it's, it's going to be pretty damn it, shitty. It's going to be really good. It's going to be really It's good. going to be really shitty. I don't think so. Look at the card. Go look at the card, guys. It's a pretty damn good card. Go look at the card. It's a good card. This one's not working. No. The card yeah. Right? I'll, I'll bring up the card. I'll bring up the card. Go ahead. Guys, you can, Go you ahead. can answer that question. At, it, okay. So I'm just going to leave it at this. At the end of the day, anybody who fights for the UFC or Bellator, whoever, you have to be a company man or woman. Mm-hmm. You do what they say because you're an employee. Rankings don't matter. So that's that. As far as like this next fight, it's going to suck. Go like, ahead. Nobody's going to buy the pay-per-view. I can't remember the last time I got a pay-per-view. Actually, I take that back. It was Connor versus <laughs> Steve, and I knew who was going to win that fight. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Uh-huh. Because... Connor puts asses in seats. Gagey does not. So End of story. Oh, so because he puts fannies in the seats, uh, he deserves to be ranked even higher than what he what he's 
presently hot, you know, ranked right now. No, we're talking about pay per view numbers. I'm talking about no, but pay per view. Yeah, I, I understand that. And we're paper, talking about pay per view numbers. I don't yeah, I, that's we're great. Not talking about that's great. Day, so you're you're telling me that because Conor McGregor is the big superstar, and and you guys know, you guys all have probably superstars in your your gym. Mike, you have a you probably have great fighters in your gym that you you train and you think could be the next up and coming Bellator fighters, UFC fighters. So do you, Kai. So do you, Chris. I'm sure you have great fighters in your gym. All right. So when you're looking at the way you rank them or the way other organizations are ranking them when they go into fights, you look at differently because they put fannies in the seats or do you look at it? And, and that's amateur fights. We're, we're talking, uh, I'm talking about the UFC and stuff like no, that. Amateur fights are the same way. But, yeah, but. You know damn well, and these guys will attest to so it. So because it to if they're ranked 10th and they have a lot of fans, you're going to put them in. As if they're, the, because their fans are the ones who are going to Well, that's going to put money in the them. pockets, yes. So when but it the comes UFC's down going to make it, money all the time anyways. And, and we've been in it. We've been in it. Mike's and Mike's been from Mike's over there in Jersey. It's no different because right. he's dealt with a, a, a Lou Negley, a card or two mm-hmm. in his in his amateur career, and we all know how that works. Whether it was over in Rawway or wherever the hell it was, Kai's dealt with it. Chris has been on them and all that. So when it all comes down to it, it's the first thing they say is, "Great, you want to fight? Okay, how many tickets do you want us to send you?" Flat out, yes, mm-hmm. plain and simple. And then from there, how many times, how many times have you seen some schlub who had 85 million cousins come to the fight, get a championship fight, but meanwhile they got a jab that can't break wind? Get me all the numbers for the last pay-per-view. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, just no different. It's, the, it's a business. It's a business no matter what. One thing, when, whether it's pro or amateur, money Rules. All right, so I, That's it. I have my producer right now looking up the last five pay-per-views and mm-hmm. the numbers that they made off those pay-per-views. Just, and I'll tell you this. It doesn't matter who's in the main event, who's on the card. They're still going to sell. Like it's the UFC. Ever? No, just the last five pay-per-views. Where the UFC, oh, during the COVID? Yeah, dude, okay. during the COVID. I want to see the numbers of the pay-per-views on how much they sold on pay-per-views. It doesn't matter who's on the card. I will, I will bet you, yes, if Connor's on the card or John Jones is on the card, it's going to be a little bit more. But... All in all, it doesn't matter who's on the card. Really, thankfully, yeah. they haven't been on the last five. So I'm just saying. It's a fair, it's a fair I, 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 Yeah, so I want, I want to see where the numbers are. I want to see if they're selling over $100 million or close to $100 million. If they are, it's a, to me, it's a win. It's a win-win for the UFC. If they're selling $100 million, you're making $100 million off a pay-per-view. Of course it's a win because they're the only ones doing pay-per-views right now. But that's what I'm saying. So why does it matter where, if you're going to put fannies in the seats? There's no fans out there. There's no fans out there. We didn't there. say that the seats weren't right in front of the it, damn it, television. All right, so, so let's that just – Conor McGregor was on a card five, uh, five pay-per-views ago. He was. He was. Was that five ago? It was five ago. He was on five pay-per-views. He fought uh, Cerrone on five pay-per-views. Was yes. Five ago? Yes. I think it was five. Okay. Well, you look it up, Speedy. But if you look at the numbers, yeah, there might be $20, $30 million difference. Yes, but they're still making $100 million. You put the fighters on – put the fighters in the octagon that we want to see. That's what I want to see. I want to see. I want to see somebody like Dana White say, "You know what? I'm going to find a way to match the fighters up that everybody wants to see." Why don't we see Ferguson and Khabib? Why don't we see Gagey and Conor McGregor? Are we ever going to see that? Is that ever going to happen? What Gagey and McGregor? Yes, because I'll no. tell you this: I don't think that we're going to see that either. No, you want to know why you'll see and. It bothers these me. Guys, it really guys bothers gonna, me. These guys are going to agree. Because I am a mixed martial arts and boxing fan. I love it. I love he, watching it. He loves boxing. I love them both, he's, bro. He's pro Get out of here. Get out. Yeah, I am a pro. Boxing. I am pro boxing. He's anti MMA. No, I'm not. He's he a liar. MMA. He's a liar. He's a liar. It, he's it. a liar, guys. Mike, you don't know me. Chris, you've Guess heard what? it. Guess what? I am not anti MMA. He's lying about me. He's full of you know what? Because I did MMA too. So don't don't no. let him don't let him fool you cuz I I'm telling you right now I do not I'm not anti MMA hates, hates MMA. Anyway. Go ahead. So when it's all said and done, let's <laughs> let's be real. When it comes to Connor, Connor's almost got pretty much that same um distinction as a um Anderson Silva. You could put Connor up against anybody no matter what the hell their ranking is at any particular time where it's Worth it for a title shot, not a title shot, whatever. And he could be coming off a five win, five loss streak, whatever, and all that. It doesn't matter Connor's record. Just the way Connor is commercially and the way he sells, he's always going to be a viable candidate for top money. Mike, is that bu- Mike? Is that bubble issues that you're chewing on, man? Because you've been chewing on that mighty long time, man. It must have some kind of taste to it. He man. ran out of snacks. Yeah, snacks. Are you going to send us some peanuts? Because I'd like some peanuts, some protein over here. 
What do you got over there? Mike's what do you got? Oh, Mentos? Well, he's got everything, man. He doesn't even have to go is home. Whoa, wait. Is that a rain? Which one is that? <laughs> That's a rain, isn't it? Rain, there we go. What the heck? What do you have in there, man? The caffeine. You, you got everything in there. What, what, Don't judge me. Don't man. judge me. Well, they're not, they're not junk. So anyway, as we I was got, saying. We got another caller in. What do we got in? Hello? No, no uh, I'm, on, uh, I'm on the chat, Nelson Ortiz. What's up, Nelson. man? What's up, Nelson? Nelson, thank going? you for responding uh, to all this stuff in the chat. Unfortunately, I wasn't <laughs> able to say anything because, you know, Chatty Cathy over here, you know, he doesn't take many breaths in between statements. Get out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking no, for I'm, myself. I'm, no, it's cool. Um, I'm uh, I'm one of the the uh, members of MMA NYC of the uh, meetup group. So we have meetups and stuff. We hit, and watch fights at uh, bars in New York City, and we constantly talk about fights. And um, the the Gay Cheney Ferguson thing was was hotly debated because there are a lot of people that wanted Ferguson to wait for the title shot against Khabib, but there were people that were against it because it was his time. People were kind of exhausted by it. Um, personally, I always thought Gaethje was is a, was is a bad matchup for Khabib, and I think he was gonna crush Ferguson. Also, it's just a bad matchup, and I I, I look at it. Um, it to me that fight was comparable to Robert Whitaker versus Adesanya, and let let me explain. So when I was analyzing that fight, I looked at Robert Whitaker's win streak, and I looked at the guys he fought. Nobody was a technical striker. I looked at I looked at his last loss before he fought Adesanya. It was Wonder Boy. Robert Whitaker does not do well against advanced strikers. So when I watched that Wonder Boy fight and I watched him do his blitzes, he got Wonder Boy capitalized on those blitzes. And 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 in and, and the week leading up to that fight, I'm like Robert Whitaker getting knocked out, and everybody was losing their minds saying. He's going to take Adesanya down. He's a b- better striker. All kinds of crazy shit. And then he, he got completely demolished. And the Fer- Ferguson is the same way. If you look at his win streak and look at the opponents he fought, they were good fighters, but they all had flaws. Pettis, Pettis gets pressured by a strong breeze. We all know that. Mm-hmm. That's not like a, a, a freaking uh, secret. Kevin Lee's striking is terrible. He's a great athlete, great wrestling Horrible fight IQ, not a good striker. Cowboy Cerrone, he's he's not a bad fighter. He's a, he's a good striker. He has good leg kicks. He doesn't have good defense. Has trash boxing. All, all those matchups favor Tony Ferguson, but against Justin Gaethje, everybody knew it was going to be a stand-up fight. It was never going to the ground. Uh, Ferguson never never changed his his approach. He fought Justin Gaethje the same way he fought Pettis. He fought Kevin Lee the same way he fought Dos Anjos, except those guys didn't have an answer because those guys aren't real pressure fighters. Dos Anjos is a pressure fighter, but he doesn't know how to circle, and his striking is very like a basic. Nelson, be, have, like, N- Nelson, before you, strength. Nelson, before you finish, I know Mike has got to get to class. Mike, uh, thank you for joining us, bud. Sure, great. Mike, you have to go teach. Mike, you got a cheech? Is he over there? <laughs> Mike, you have to teach? It's Taro. What's up, Taro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Mike, thank you for joining yeah, us, bud. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate you. Thanks, Mike. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So we lost Mike, guys. We lost Mike. We still have Kai. Hi, Tara. What's Tara! going on? What's going on, Tara? Team gratitude, baby. Team gratitude. <laughs> Team gratitude. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, guys. I Bye. Appreciate it. You guys have a great night. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. As you guys know, that he's great. He's Kai, Kai, what the hell are you eating over there, Kai? Kai, you eating some vegan stuff? He, he probably is. Kai's eating some, like, Garden Stabuli burger. <laughs> stuck between two, like, rice patties and, like, with a side of disgusting. <laughs> I, I, I can't hear him. See? I can't hear him. See, it took his damn voice away. He muted himself. Yeah, I sure did, because I was chomping away. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Nelson. I'm sorry. Sorry, Nelson. 
No, I mean, I, I'm not pretty much finished that whole Gage and Ferguson. Thing. So do you have you have uh, any questions for our coaches? Uh, I mean, not really. I mean, I, I I watch a shit ton of MMA. I've been watching the UFC since I think UFC one or two, like one of the first ones. So I've been watching it a lot of time. I, I pretty much just break down fights when I just rewatch them. And and, and it's great. So I, don't, I, don't, I don't really. Yeah. Are you a coach, Nelson? Yeah, Do you we, coach? We actually, we, no, no. Uh, but we were. I mean, we were very knowledgeable fans. Like, there's a few of us. We actually had a podcast in 2016, mm-hmm. but it kind of slowed down when the the leader of our group uh, suddenly passed away. I'm sorry to hear ago. that. Sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, that's uh, thank you. Um, where are you guys yeah, located? He, he was like the guy. Where, that where are you located? Uh, I'm in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we watch fights. We talk about fights. There's a lot of guys who wrestle. They do jujitsu. They do judo, um, boxing. There's a lot of guys in our group who are very knowledgeable. So, we we all I myself have done some kickboxing, so we, we we're all pretty knowledgeable when it comes to fighting. And I mean, I, I think MMA is one of those sports where, like, the more you watch it, the better you get an understanding of it. Certain matchups, Gaethje Khabib, it's going to be a collision course. Gaethje's takedown defense versus Khabib try, trying to get him up against the fence. Mm-hmm. Two, again, two pressure fighters, and that's the thing. If Khabib gets him against the fence going to be a long night if Khabib cannot pressure Justin enough to back him up he's going to have a lot of problems and, and it, as you know it's all about matchups that's that's the way fighting is matchups are key and absolutely and, and I agree with that and that's why you saw Ferguson I, I just didn't think it was enough time for Ferguson um to fight that fight you want to be the champ you better learn how to adapt well, that's not quite true. It's not called a traditional champ. Tell me a champion that's done that two weeks before to fight a guy that was completely off. I'm talking about a good fighter. A good fighter. A top-ranked fighter. Go ahead. Give me the numbers. Um, oh, let me what see. You, wait. You're talking see. about a last-minute a last minute switcheroo? All right. So let's, okay. let's Randy see. Couture beat Chuck Liddell in a last-minute right, so, switcheroo. So we got, we, got, <laughs> we got all the UFC last five bouts. You guys ready? You ready, Kai? You ready, Chris? I'm listening. Kai, all right. Kai is, yeah. is dying with anticipation. All right. There. UFC 247 made 1.491 million. That sucks. UFC 248 made 1.195 million. UFC 250 made $775,000. UFC 249 made $700,000. UFC 251 made $1.31 million. Those right numbers there. suck. Okay. So, Speedy, give me Conor McGregor's number of his fight. What is it? Do you have Conor McGregor's last 249. fight? Was it 249? That's probably the biggest number on there. 700,000? 249? 700,000. I'm, I'm asking. Is it 249? Uh, if it's 249, it's 700. When was Conor's last fight? Come on, Speedy. I, I, want, I want to get it right here. Because I, I, the, numbers, the numbers mean a lot to me because you guys were talking about numbers. It's all about fannies in the seats, is. right? Is that, that's what you guys are saying. So let's get the numbers of what Conor McGregor and, – and by the way, there was a crowd for Conor's fights. So that, that benefits Conor too. So there was a crowd for his last fight. Was there was, it was a pay-per-view. Oh, okay. No, this is, this is the pay-per-view. This is pay-per-view buys uh, right here. So I just, want, I just want to get the numbers. What is it, Speedy? Three million, so three million. So Connor's last fight made, and that was that was three million dollars. That's what they that mean. So how much more money with Connor McGregor on the card is he as is he is you really making on that? Look about it. It's three million dollars. Uh, two fifty one one point three. UFC 249, 700. UFC 250, 775. UFC 240, uh, 48, 1.195. UFC 247, 1.49. So basically you're saying in the worst case scenario, based off of those numbers, yeah. 3 million opposed to those. So basically yeah. Connor is worth about another 45%. Mm, I don't know about 45, 45%, but it's, it's, 
you know, it, it, to point, me, it's not a lot of money. You're making it seem like Mike Tyson made. I mean, Floyd Mayweather boxing made. Is different. I, that's boxing fine. Is different. That's different. That's fine. You but know, you, the pay scales for MMA has always been. It's all about pay per view. Go look at the pay per views. Go look at the pay per views. Uh, no, you're talking about two Wilder. totally different animals. All right. So I'm just. You know, you know, from a socially accepted standpoint in yeah. regards to endorsements. Yep. But this, not a, this has nothing to do with endorsements. Has always, this has nothing to do with endorsements. Money it's comes just, in. Well, this is all about buying. It comes it's from buying the pay-per-view. production. It comes from being able to give the purse in terms of what they make. That's a lot. Has a lot to do with the endorsements. Well, that has a lot to do with promoting. That has a lot to do about fannies right. and seats. That's, why That's I'm what saying promoting. It's two different things. If you want to go, with yeah, but MMA I'm not versus, you know, an MMA thing versus an MMA thing. I'm That's talking about thing. what the UFC can make off that deal, especially with their zone. You're talking right. about people in the seats for Conor McGregor's last fight, and mm-hmm. you only made three million dollars off that pay per view. And then you go with no seats, nobody out in the audience. One point nine. One point nine. I mean, that's not. It's not a huge that's pay grade. A, it's not. What is it? A million dollars more? A million two. A million one. That's a lot. I, that's of money. not. A, it's, it really isn't. It really isn't for a multi-billion-dollar organization. But they're not looking at as as as. I'm a, just saying. I'm just I'm, saying, man. And I'm, I'm just, just saying. I'm putting numbers together. And I'm just. Putting, I'm doing. Hi, we're bringing numbers, Chris and, and I'm doing Nelson. Math. These are numbers, and I, I'm saying, is a million dollars that much more that you're making off of one point nine? Let me ask you this. I Let mean, me ask you seriously. this. If this is your business and you made a yeah. million dollars more, okay, you're telling me you're not going to blink over that? I, obviously, he'll he'll blink he'll blink over it. But not, who's how he? much? Dana? Dana White. He'll blink right. over that, but it's not a lot of money. So you're gonna you're gonna put him as the number two contender because he's making you a million dollars more. At this time, when we're talking about COVID, because because you know those you lot. know those UFC seat, seats, no matter who's fighting, is packed. Those seats are packed. Mm-hmm. They're going to sell out no matter what. So if you look at the pay per view numbers, even with Connor on it, they're not that good. So well, if you want to think business wise, uh, you got to think overhead yeah, and everything. Yeah. And if I have an extra million dollars, that means I have an extra profitability. Mm-hmm. So a million dollars can make a huge difference because if I have one million dollars now. I don't paid my staff. I don't pay my. <clears throat> That's why you have person. sponsors. I don't pay the pay per views. I don't pay the hosting. I don't pay all that stuff now. If it cost me eight hundred thousand to to do all of that, and I made two hundred thousand profit, you add an extra million dollars into it. Now I made one million two hundred thousand, which is a significant difference. Absolutely, absolutely. But that's why you have sponsors, man. That's why you have all these sponsors that the UFC will not let you get sponsors for. So that's an extra. Okay? So if that's the case, and if everything's paid no, but for, he's be, got an extra million. He well, just puts right into his pocket. Well, again, if you're looking at the sponsors that they're getting, Reebok or whatever they have, the deal five hundred, six hundred million. Now they're not with Reebok yeah, anymore. No, Who they with? Thankfully. That's up. Oh, who, who are they with now? Venom now. Venom. So Venom now in 2021 is going to be Venom, which yeah. I think is. Well, I said this before. Yeah, you to did think say that this. Venom. You did say this. And I mean, we we all remember Venom from back in the day when you know it wasn't even that. You know, everybody's going for the bad boy shorts and the right. sprawl shorts and everything. And Venom was pretty much perceived as just a kickboxing apparel company with the tie shorts, the elbow pads, and stuff, and that they still use now. So when it comes to that, when you when you're Venom and you were able to outbid Reebok to gain the UFC's attention and to have an exclusive exclusivity right, I want to know if Dwayne Johnson bought Venom and we just don't know about it yet, like the <laughs> XFL, because that's a hell of a lot of money to outbid Reebok. He bought it the XFL for the no, but you know what I'm you know where I'm going yeah, with this yeah, to say yeah. Venom yeah. was able to outbid. Reebok, yeah, that's a that's, huge story that a lot of people don't really... That's not good for Reebok. That's big. Yeah. That's really big. That's not good for Reebok. Especially because... Well, did they, well, did they outbid them, or did they just not really want to... Bid. Going that direction? They bid. I don't think From, Reebok made such profitability being the, the host and the sponsor of the UFC. I think the other part of this, Kai, mm-hmm. and you want to know something, I think the other thing was Reebok probably thought they were going to do a lot better with apparel in mm-hmm. there with the T-shirts and mm-hmm. all that, which we all know... They didn't. You didn't really see a lot of it when you go to those Reebok stores and such. You really didn't see it as much as you see the CrossFit. They didn't. That UFC brand did not do. I would even say a fraction of the sales that CrossFit and the other things and probably NFL did. I think well, Venom is going to do much you, better. You know Venom what? If they actually got all the names right on the damn shirt, then more people will probably buy them. Probably buy them. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was at the beginning. It was horrible. But. At the same time, though, it was like when a lot of guys were fighting, and this goes back to like when Tito and Chuck and Randy and all those like, the good old days team stuff. They had signature, yeah, the good old days of fighting. They had signature shirts, like they had cool designs on them. You get a Reebok shirt with their another person's name on it. Mm-hmm. It looks like shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you try to put your name on it. 
it looks even more like shit because you don't. <laughs> yeah, the, the the Reebok design team really brought the now, ball on that. I love Reebok football, but it's terrible. like, hey, I'm gonna put on another person's jersey with their name on it and wear it around and act like I'm a pro football player. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. No, I agree with you, and and I, I so, think I, I agree with you, Chris. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But that too is like from the fighter standpoint with the Reebok thing, they were getting screwed on money, like severely screwed on money. It was all tiered. They were going from, yeah, it was tiered. So guys like, I think it was Brandon Schaub said this on the podcast at one point. He said, I went from making a million dollars per fight to making not even half, making less than half of what I wasn't making. And he even showed bank statements saying how much he made on that income from one fight, having sponsors, and then the Reebok deal came up, and fighters were having a hard time. They had to take undisclosed sponsors mm-hmm. so they could actually just make a, make a living. So, or they had to open a school. They had to go teach seminars or whatever because they couldn't afford shit. I think that the Venom thing is actually a good thing for the UFC. It partly, not so much the UFC because the UFC is a different animal altogether. It's a brand. It's a for-profit organization, period. And fighters are employees. And at any point, they can be shoved out quickly. So the branding for Venom is good for the spectators. Because now, more than likely, they're going to be able to get a signature shirt or signature shorts or whatever. And, you know, be able to strut around town again wearing somebody else's name on their shirt. So they released it's probably going to go back to deal, the fighters like, making more money because of it. Go ahead, go ahead. What were you saying, Kai? No, I said, have they released a deal? Like uh, what the what they're allowing with the, the fighters? And Not the yet. Because thing? technically they're still under Reebok's rule mm-hmm. until yeah, 2021. So you're probably not going to find out or hear anything about it until just about turn of the next year. So yeah, you probably hear Venom, about it in December. To me, Venom has less money than than Reebok, mm-hmm. so their payout might be even worse. I think probably, if anything, they probably made a deal because since Venom has equipment, they probably did some kind of licensing deal with limited editions and this and that. They have them in Walmart, so you know, piece where they got mass like, production. Of things, yeah, you know, because we, as we all remember, the last time you saw a deal like this with Venom going into the UFC was when. Um, I think we all remember Combat Sport International was real big. Remember the catalogs that was going head to head with Title yeah. and Ringside and such, and then you saw all this stuff. What on the Ultimate Fighter TV show season one with the training gloves and Kai? You know you still got this stuff. Hey, hey, hey! hey you don't hey, throw hey. any of this stuff away. Don't don't let my don't let my my age. Kai's got kendo sticks. <laughs> Kai's got kendo sticks. Yo. First day working at Kai's place, I remember, oh, yeah, and we got more weights in the closet. And I was like, where are the weights? They're on the bottom. Yo, there's kendo sticks in here. <laughs> anyway. I, I still keep some tradition on the side, and plus you never know when you need a kendo stick when you have some student Uh-oh. that's not listening, mm-hmm. and sometimes you need to bring out the legal discipline tools. It, it turned into ECW real fast in some of those damn sessions. But then again, you see Chris all silent over there? Chris has a collection. Chris is, like, known for swords. This guy literally has weapons. What? Weapons. As he said, there's nobody around him, but he's got a bunch of weapons, like he's waiting for the purge. (laughs) He's going to come out like Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai, hair in a top knot, and just go nuts. Silence is golden. No, no. no. I'll be the last one standing, though. That's for sure. (laughs) He'll be the last one standing. I'm not going to his gym. (laughs) I'll look like Chop Suey, man. Give me a break. You this, got Kai with his chopsticks, and you got this guy with his swords. Kai don't. Kai doesn't wait long enough to open up chopsticks if he if he's got to eat something. It don't happen. <laughs> no, you know how he was just talking about talking to Jiminy. Okay, he said. I guarantee you, this will happen. He sent Jiminy downstairs to the office to go do something. That's her food. He said it's been sitting here way too damn long. Guess she don't want it or tough shit. She's out of luck. He <laughs> ate it. That's what happens. Mm. Tell me hey, I'm wrong. Hey, hey, no. She went to the store and she bought me my own meal this time because she's worried about this me time. eating her food. So this time. She knows that if she supports me and my food habit, then <laughs> she, her food will be safe waiting there for her when she's done teaching classes. Is her food still in the fridge? <laughs> uh, that I'd have to ask. 
See, she hid it. She hid it. She hid the damn food. Now, babe, they're making fun of me because they say I eat your food on the side. <laughs> Probably feed it to the dog. First off, you want to know something? <laughs> Jiminy is not going to go against me because Jiminy knows I'm right. <laughs> Jiminy still has training after this session, so at eight o'clock, so she better side correctly in the next four minutes. <laughs> Listen, guys, since since we got the two of you on here. Mm-hmm. Gotta know because I've always said it, mm-hmm. and I'm I gotta get you guys to do this before you get off the damn sing line. Sweet Caroline. No, absolutely we can't. That's that's banned because of COVID. You spit too much. Uh, so anyway, uh, when it's all said and done, you guys, both of you, I know for a fact, you guys have <laughs> stories, incriminating, fun stories. We got three minutes, so good give us one. Kai, give us a good one, man. Some funny ass shit. Come on. Uh, Good story. Oh man, uh, I'm probably not going to have to name any names. No, so no, no, I'll, I'll no, 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 no. I didn't say about me. No, 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 no. I'll tell. Oh, I have a lot of no, stories no, 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 no. Not that I'll one. I'll tell one funny story real quick. Okay, I'll sum it up. Okay, this is one of my uh, favorite stories. So, me and uh, a fighter of mine, I won't name the fighter, and another fighter of mine went upstate to go train with my uh, cousin Daniel. You know Daniel. Daniel coach, Sterling. Yeah. With uh, yeah, Daniel Sterling, coach. So we went upstate to Massachusetts. So we had a, a little too much to drink at the time. So we had a, a lot to drink. So we went from that drinking place to another <laughs> drinking establishment. So you know the story. I know so the story. when we went to this other drinking establishment, uh, the person had one drink. As the person had one drink, uh, she laid in my lap. As she laid in my lap, I was like, okay, she passed out already. As she passed out, she got up and then she wind up throwing up. When she threw up, she threw up all over me all over herself, all over the place. So I had to hurry up and carry her into the bathroom. As I carried her into the bathroom, uh, we were in, obviously we're in a relationship, me and this, uh, this person. I, I had to take off her clothes. I already had thrown up on it. I took my clothes off. I already had thrown up on it. She was throwing up over What is the, this, Dances with Wolves? No, no, no. It's good. Go ahead. Keep going. No, she was story. throwing up over the, uh, the sink and the female bathroom because I had a choice between the male bathroom and the female bathroom. I figured if I took, if I went into the female bathroom, hopefully I wouldn't get arrested. Uh, bad. I was drunk. Remember that. So now as she's half naked throwing up on the thing, I'm only in my boxers in there. An officer walks into the place now and sees me over this young lady, half naked. She's half naked. And officer's right there going, what's going on over here? I'm like, officer, I promise you, it's it's just not what it is. <laughs> it's just not happening, officer. Uh, th- this is my this is my fiance. I, I promise you, like, she just had, he's like, what is she on? I'm like, she's on nothing. I was like, we really just had this one drink. She's like. He's like, I've been in the business for over 30 years. That's not one drink that she happens to be on. I'm like, please, officer, it, it just really isn't what it is. He's like, you know what? You and her need to get out of here. So I'm like, all right. I call up one of my other friends. I'm like, you got to get us some clothes. Got us some clothes. Got anything. I picked her up, threw over my shoulder, started walking out of the bathroom with her. The officer still there. The officer goes, if she ain't walking out on her own two feet, you guys are going to jail. I'm like. I go back into the place. I start smacking her. Like, yo, you got to calm too. I was like, we about to be smacking arrested her. here. You got to hurry up. Was he watching so, you do that? <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't watch me do it because I brought her back in the bathroom. So me and this other person, we drag her out on step by step. She gets outside. As she gets outside, unfortunately, she decides uh, she no longer wants the clothes that she's wearing on. Mm. So she takes off all her clothes mm. in the middle of the parking lot. And starts uh, running towards my car and winds up throwing up again, <laughs> full everything out to the world uh, to me, my cousin, and all the standbys that's there. Uh, long story short, I had to actually walk into back into the mall and buy sneakers because she threw up all over my sneakers. <laughs> and the guy looks at me. I goes, "Hey, I need some sneakers." He's like, "What happened?" I was like, "Don't even ask. I just need some sneakers." <laughs> goes there, charges me three hundred dollars for a pair of sneakers that I know were overpriced because he knew how badly I needed them. Bought the sneakers. Three hundred dollars? What did you buy, Jordans? <laughs> Probably. I bought literally regular Nikes. <laughs> But I, I needed them, so I swiped my card and I left. Mm. So uh, long story short, she's butt naked in the hallway. I had throw up all over me with sneakers on, shirtless, in the mall. Terrible story. <laughs> Gotta love fight week. Uh, Chris, uh, did you like that story, Chris? Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Mike, well, but, you know what's funny? Chris is all like, yeah, I ain't got nothing like that, man. <laughs> I, thought, yeah. I thought we were talking oh, about, like. Yeah, you got I, I, I'm going to that. That, uh, that one, that one, yeah, that one, that one. That one. Yeah. Well, you know what, Kai? You are an interesting individual. Let me tell you. <laughs> I've had a long life. Yeah, you do. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> well, guys, uh, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I really do appreciate you guys joining us. We'll get you on again in the near future. You guys are awesome. And uh, uh, all the different information you gave us. Uh, give a shout out to all the people in your gyms. Go ahead, uh, Kai. You first. Oh, everybody in my gym right now. Oh, I can't even name everybody. We have numerous fighters, numerous friends. Uh, Kenneth Raysa is one of our, our pro fighters. Louis Rizzuli is one of our uh, cage fighters. Professor Dylan is uh, the professor of our Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, my son is here, uh, Kai Malik Evers, too. You've seen him. Uh, my girl is here, uh, Jiffany. She's stretching out with him right now, doing whatever they're doing before class. Cooking your dinner. Uh, we have John, who's over there, who's one of our fighters also, too. We have numerous, Ness, Jaden. Uh, uh, some of our, our pro fighters, uh, Ron Leon is one of our fighters also too. Uh, we do uh, the Data Dream program, which has Jay Mock, it has uh, Flacco, it has uh, Gio. We have so many different fighters. We're looking just to get back in there. If I miss any of you guys, I'm sorry, I don't have the list in front of me <laughs> to uh, to go down there. But I still love all of you guys. You're just not coming to my head right now. You forgot about up. Anthony. You forgot about your boy over here. Well, Anthony's right there. He said, you guys said who's in my gym. Anthony, he always knows I have mutual love for him. We speak on a regular basis about the shit that we don't like, the shit that we do like, <laughs> and basically in the moment. How about you, Chris? Anything you say to your gym, all your fighters, before we let you guys go? Um, just want to shout out to uh, my guys, Dynamic Jiu-Jitsu, um, and my other academies that are under uh, the Chris Papandria Jiu-Jitsu Association. Uh, even that degenerate sitting next to you, um, he is my lone, lone student out in New York City right now. Um, just everybody stay safe and uh, just everybody keep training, keep the drama out of the schools, and uh, sh- just shut up and train. Just and shut don't up and date train. your people. <laughs> just say no. Just say Just no. Just say no. Just say no I, to I dating. Say, I say no sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> say no to dating with your teammates. Oh, guys, thank you for calling. Uh, up next, the wise guys, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We will be back in a couple of weeks, me and Anthony Andorossi. Uh, shout out to all the fans that listen to us every single day. Uh, we are. I'm working on some kind of sponsor to sponsor this show, too. So, uh, very, very soon. So, uh, definitely looking forward to what we're going to be doing in the near future. Uh, we will be talking to Kai, Chris, and Mike again. I'm sure we will, and I'm sure they're going to have their own opinions to whatever we're talked about. We talk about and talked about during the last couple of months. Uh, up next, the Wise Guys here on the Great Worldwide Sports Radio Network. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.